Hi YouTube, how are you doing today? My name is Trevor Slescu, owner of Monster Hobbies Online. So for the longest time I've been collecting all these little garage pieces from different model kits and sometimes people give me them, you know, things like 125th scale toolboxes and fire extinguishers and cinder blocks and uh, jacks and jack stands and all kinds of really unique things. Um, even uh, the oxyacetylene tanks and like the AMT 1953 Ford and all that kind of stuff. So what I thought I would do is I would build a garage scene from the 1930s. So today I'm going to start off with the first tool, which of course is going to be the toolbox. Because how can you do anything without a toolbox? How can you work in a garage without a toolbox? Come on, people! <laughs> anyway. So, without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see how I tackle a 1930s style toolbox. I'm going to start off my 1930s garage build with this toolbox. Now this tool chest is actually 124 scale, and I do believe that it came from those monogram kits back in the, I guess, late 80s, early 90s, where they used to have the NASCARs, and then you got all these tools and whatever off the side. because uh, the parts tree had a um, fuel jug came with it. Uh, the thing about this is I'm going to build a 1930s garage using components that I have from the junk box that people have given me throughout the years. So this is one of them. And in the 30s, they didn't use red paint on these toolboxes like they do now. I think the red came in around the 70s sometime. But prior to that, they used to use a color that was very much like this. If any of you have seen old toolboxes, I can actually post a few just in a minute here. So what do you think? Does it actually look like this green? Because this is the Games Workshop Skarsnik Green. Now Skarsnik, of course, is a goblin in uh, the Warhammer universe. But this paint is actually meant to be used in conjunction with a base coat, a shade color, and then layer one. And Skarsnik Green here is actually layer two. So this would be a highlight type paint. It's not really designed to be a full, you know, paint the entire thing type of paint. Um, not really meant to be used as a base coat, but it is the closest that I think that these toolboxes were without actually trying to hunt one down and color match. So what I will do is I will uh, tape it to this little box here, which will give me sort of a platform to paint this with. I'm going to uh, put my tape on the bottom, and then what I'll do is I'll try to paint, you know, like a first layer on here and then a second. I'll have to do it with a brush because I can't spray this. I actually have no way of uh, airbrushing it or anything. Plus the Citadel paints can be kind of, you know, have a weird consistency between thin and thick and then I'd have to, you know, try to figure out how to cut it and everything with thinner and, you know, all that jazz. So instead of trying to do that, I will just sort of thin out the paint a little bit with some water and uh, tape it to this so I've got a secure base and that it's easier to paint the whole thing. Here we have our water dish, and then the paint mixing dish, and the little box with some green painter's tape on it, and our toolbox. And I'm going to use this paintbrush. Now this one actually broke right here, but I just can't accept that fact, so I used some green painter's tape to hold this on, and it's been holding for a few years. So that's always good. Okay, there's our Skarsnik green, and I'm just going to shake it and take out the toolbox with my thumb. Now I did sand the toolbox with some 400 just to get rid of some of the glue that squished out in between the panels. I also took my file and ran it across the top in here just to clean up that groove. And then uh, I finished sanding it with some 600 grade paper. So this is how it is now. Okay, so I'll open up the green right there. And let's see, I should actually have a bag under here. I guess the consistency of this is not as bad as I figured. Maybe I won't need to uh, cut this down with water. Now let's just put a little on the top here. So with the brush, 
You really want to go from one end to the other and pull across. I'm just using the weight of the brush. Now there are there is a bit of streaking in here, but I'm going to put on a bunch of coats on this and uh, should actually look quite nice once we're done. Now I'm noticing a couple little specks coming in here, but uh, hopefully I can get them out. Now this is going to require two coats, so I just want to go and be light along here. Actually this is looking like that uh, proper green for these toolboxes. I don't know, I might put a wash into here to see what happens when the paint dries. The uh, wash will uh, go into all the cracks and crevices. Just bring that out a little bit more. Okay. So I'll continue with this and then show you what the first coat looks like. Here's our tool chest with the first coat of Skarsnik Green on it. And as you can see, it is a bit streaky in here. I don't know how well the camera can pick this up. I think you can really see it there. It's like grainy. But that's the direction of the brush. I'm going from the bottom to the top, going straight up. And when I apply the second coat, it should actually get rid of the streakiness of this. I did notice there's little bits of junk in the paint. And another weird thing is there was a lot of air bubbles. So I had to uh, keep moving the brush around to get rid of the air bubbles. Now, I don't know if that's going to be every bottle of Skarsnik Green. I've had mine for a few years, so maybe it's starting to go weird. But at any rate, now all I have to do is just sit here and let this all dry up. Maybe about 20 minutes. And then I'll apply the second coat and we'll see how it looks. Here we have our toolbox after the second coat. And as you can see, it's now starting to look less transparent and streaky and more like a solid color. Now, I do think I want to try to experiment with the wash on there, but I'm still not 100% sure if that's the right course of action because I'll lose the solid apple green color. But what I would do is put a wash on here and then uh, go over and dry brush with the same color just to uh, get a little bit of um, depth into the cabinet. And then all these little handles, those would all be painted with either a steel color or um, maybe more like a chrome. I'm not too sure. Probably would be more steel or even brass on there to make it more like the 30s. Because I'm not really sure that they would use that. They might even have nickel plated, you know, but not 100% sure. So what I have here is a Thonian camo shade, and this is like a very thin wash. And I will take this other brush that I have, it's still a soft one, and I'll just, you know, pop this open, dip it in, and then give it the wash and let it all flow into the cracks. Okay, so just dip the brush into the shade here and just knock a bit of that out. And now let's give this a try. So here we go. Oh yeah, it's not too bad. In fact, maybe... No, it's it's best to have uh, come back on this with the dry brush. There, that's giving it more depth already. Now when this dries, of course, it'll uh, look a lot better. There we go. I'm still getting these crazy bubbles in here. I don't know what's happening with that little air bubbles. Anyway, whoops. Oh, this wasn't completely dry. Oh no. So I'm getting a little bit of uh, paint rip right there where the uh, where the almost dry paint is actually getting pulled up by the wash. Okay, so now this toolbox is looking pretty grimy with this uh, wash on it, actually. Oh, getting some cracking and stuff going on. Yeah. Should really let this acrylic dry overnight. Just gotta be 
careful for now. Now you note I'm going in the opposite direction of the actual way I painted it before. I don't know if that was a good choice or not. <laughs> okay. Alright. So I'm not being too concerned about the uh, thickness of this wash because we'll be going over it again with the Scarsnick Green just to uh, bring this all back up to where it was. We're gonna switch the brush and use stiffer bristles. So this is how it looks, you know, pretty runny and grimy, especially here. There's a little bit of an issue. Let's see if I can catch this. Okay, there we go. All right, so again, just got to let this all dry up. Oh yeah, got to get that little bit right there. Okay. There we go. So now this looks really <laughs> kind of gross and grimy, doesn't it? But we'll see what the magic looks like in just a little bit here. Let's just try to... Once more into the breach on the top here. Okay, now the, the thing about these shades is they take even longer to dry than the actual paint. So we will leave this for quite a bit and then come back and see what it looks like. We'll apply the uh, Scarsnick Green in a dry brush. Now, I don't really want to have this look all rusty, so we'll see what happens coming up next. So for a little bit of an intermission while we're waiting for the paint to dry on the toolbox, I came across these old Route 66 Highway Scenes decals from the Ravel Monogram Highway Scenes kits. Now I did use this, this was a Pennzoil sign that I cut out, but here we've got our Route 66 signs and the restroom. This is more like a gas station kind of decal sheet. See here it says it contains lead. So again, that's uh, mortar fuel. Then we have this nice New Mexico pendant here, a great big map, knee high, that's a soda or a pop as we would call it in Canada. Here's Ted's creamy root beer, which would be nice. And then one of the um, brands, Conoco. And then we've got Indian motorcycles. Then here's a whole bunch of different license plates from like 1962, 61 uh, and 1958. Got a Champion Spark Plug sign here. These would be tin signs. Burma Shave. This is actually a Route 66 board game. And then we've got the uh, mobile, um, you know, mobile oil hanging basket or whatever this is. <laughs> and or Drink Orange Crush. I have a, a use for this. I want to put it on the um, 40 Ford, the panel van off the side. I've got a few of these decal sheets. And then there's all these little, um, like, Route 66 and the different townships and stuff. These are maps that would be sitting on somebody's seat. So I might make a diorama using these later on, but not for this garage scene. So here we are the next morning after the shade has all dried up. And this is what our little toolbox looks like. And it looks pretty disgusting actually. Like uh, somebody spilled a whole bunch of oil on it. You can see some areas where the shade actually pooled, but we're gonna fix that up with our dry brush. Now I like to use this one as a dry brush and uh, we'll go over top again with the Scarsnick Green. So what I'll do is just tap the bristles into our paint here and then I'm gonna gently wipe this off a little bit because what I don't want to do is actually repaint over top of the uh, toolbox. I want to just, oops, drag the, uh, the paint across, just like this, something simple. Okay, just to uh, break up the um, 
the shade is what I'm trying to say. Actually, I, I could paint the top solid again. But yeah, you're not really painting, you're just trying to knock some paint on. So now as you can see, it doesn't look as dirty, grease, grossy. You know, like it's actually getting a little bit buried underneath. So that's what we're trying for here. Okay, so here we go. It gives it a little more depth. Go from one end to the other, all the way across. And there we go. Starting to look a bit weathered, but not, you know, not greasy, oily, like somebody sprayed it with a, you know, a grease gun or something. Now, let's see. So I find usually if you go in one direction, it's a lot better. Okay. And this brush is so stiff that it's actually not filling in the crack down there. So that's really what we wanted to do with this thing. I could have actually just used a small brush and tried to, to run the shade into the cracks. Okay, what I really need to do is hold this thing, pull it off the tape, and hold it. Actually, let's not talk about it. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to start from the top and just pull down with the Scarsnick Green. Just to get rid of that. That grease grimy look. Okay. Need it to get right in here. <laughs> Come on, get in there. Okay, so now you're starting to see that this is sort of coming back from that really deep look. So I'll carry on with this and then we'll see how it looks. Here's what our cabinet looks like after applying the wash and the top coat of Scarsnick Green. It does still look streaky though. I mean, it almost looks like a six-year-old painted this thing, <laughs> unfortunately. But I don't know, maybe it gives it some charm here. It's not an exactly new kit, like a new, um, a new toolbox, I should say, not a kit. You know, and yet at the same time, it's not so old that it's all busted up and rusty. So it's sort of a in-between stage, sort of like the beginning of everything. Okay, that's a bad excuse for poor painting. No, I'm just kidding. No, I don't know. I, I think it gives it a bit of charm. So what we'll do next, I'll do this off camera. I'm going to paint all those little handles. And I figure what I'll do is, I was going to paint them steel, but then... I don't know. I, I think it might be better just to use some of this chrome. This is old Model Master silver paint. It, uh, it's it been around for a long time in my collection, so long it even rubbed off the, the color label there. But we'll add it on and uh, it should look good. I'll have to use one of my tiny brushes in here, but uh, let's give it a try. Now here's the toolbox after applying a bit of the chrome paint. And uh, unfortunately, for some reason, I'm a little jittery today. So I did hit in a few spots with uh, the chrome on the green. Wow, how'd I get jittery? Maybe I should eat some uh, lunch or something. But there you can see the, uh, the chrome paint on the handle there. Oops, getting a little too close to the camera now. But uh, there she is. And it does look a little more like a toolbox now. So what I'll do is just touch up where I kind of <laughs> jabbed it with the chrome. And uh, that should be easy enough. The acrylic paint is a little bit heavier than the, the enamel, so it should cover it pretty well. So let's just do that and I'll take some pictures of the final result. Here we have our monogram toolbox painted up in a 1930s apple green with our ICM mechanic. This mechanic came in the Henry Ford and Friends set, and as you can see, the cabinet is actually pretty tall. It would be the perfect size for a mechanic of this size. Of 
Well, I hope you found that video really helpful and hopefully entertaining. And if you love these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And if you really want to help out, check out that join button down below. It uh, financially, you know, you give me a little bit each month and just to show your support and so that I can feed my wife, kids, and whatever else I got going on. A lizard and a tortoise, actually. <laughs> well, anyway, hope you enjoyed all that. And until next time, wish me luck on my 30s garage and happy model building.